This is Gresham Street in the city of London. That's the Bank of England there behind us. This is a fake security van. And these are security boxes containing real money. Each box contains 50,000 pounds. This is Mark. Mark is our fake security guard. And uh, Mark is a stunt actor, but he has been briefed to act and behave exactly as a real security guard would. This whole area is being protected and surrounded by the police. They are surrounding here uh, from a radius of about 200 yards. Their job is to keep the public away and to intervene if anything gets out of hand. So this is the venue, this is the set for the challenge that I've set myself and have been working on secretly for the last couple of weeks, which is this. Under the guise of a motivational seminar in which I teach my skills to a group of middle management businessmen and women, can I get any of them to steal £100,000 in what they believe is a genuine armed robbery? That's the show. This is The Heist. History is littered with examples of normal people being persuaded to act in deviant, criminal or irrational ways. How do you persuade someone to do something they would not normally be prepared to do? Some people might think of hypnosis. However, hypnosis isn't really what it appears to be. It's only a kind of play acting. And no one would carry out an instruction to really commit a robbery any more than they'd murder someone if they were told to. So my real task is to insidiously massage certain ideas and mental states into these people without ever mentioning a robbery so that hopefully, when the time comes, they will just spontaneously, of their own free will, just decide to do it. And that journey starts at a rather comfortable hotel in Hertfordshire. Thirteen delegates were invited to an intimate seminar to apparently learn some of my skills. They were amongst the first to answer ads placed in the press, and also to fulfil certain criteria. They had to be open, responsive types, who I felt would respond reasonably to my techniques, have no criminal record, and fall into a typical middle management income bracket or above. They also had to be deemed psychologically robust enough by an independent psychologist to take part in the show. And at the end of the show, the opportunity to commit the robbery will be offered separately and individually to just four of the delegates. So I have to decide which four will be the most likely to take the bait. I have done motivational um, seminars before in the past. I've delivered them myself and been to them. I hope that I'll be able to pick up something from being in close proximity to someone who's so uh, talented. I'm intrigued by him. I'm very intrigued as to how he does what he does. The way he manages to influence people and use uh, the power of suggestion to get people to do what he wants would be very useful in my job, absolutely. Yeah. They've arrived the evening before the seminar to have time to relax and have dinner. They are aware that everything is being filmed, but they're unaware that I'm also present, watching from an upstairs room to see how they interact. To kick off the process of getting to know them and to amplify their behaviours a little, I introduce a couple of elements to see how they react to authority. Firstly, an actor playing an irritating security guard hassles them on their way into dinner. The antagonism that some of these people will feel towards this security guard, dressed in green, will become an important part of the jigsaw puzzle right at the end of the journey. Enjoy. Cheers. 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 To us. <laughs> you can pull a stroke on Darren Brown. It's a trust to be done. Did you see when Darren did the zombie shoot him up? Yes. Yeah. I thought that's probably about as, about as extreme as I'd like it to get. As they enjoy their lavish meal and start to really relax, they're unaware that another actor, playing the maitre d', will present them with an unexpected bill after dinner and drinks. I want to see how they react, who complies, who gets angry, and who emerges as the alpha male or female of the group and takes charge. Sorry, I think people have put their cards with them or a means of payment. If it's, if it's in your room, would it be possible to get it? Because we'd prefer to settle this tonight. What's this? For the meal, the bills. The bills? I'm sorry, a few people don't seem to have not been aware of the fact that the accommodation, is, the accommodation is paid for. I'm still, still hungry. hungry. <laughs> Personally, I'm still hungry. Where's the crisps? I'm, I'm very sorry, but you should have 
You said at the time, though, you have to pay for what you've consumed. I'm sorry. Hello, have you got your payment ready, sir? Have I got my payment ready? Yes, yeah, send it to my account. Yeah, no. have, you, have, you, have you got your card in your bedroom? or have you, have you got? No, send it to my accountant. Do you want to go and get my card? Well, I'd love you to get your card. That, that would be a lot easier. It is a bit embarrassing. I understand it's a bit of a surprise to some of you. If you can sort it all out... Young man, there you go. Put it all on that. Right, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers for dinner, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Our 13 businessmen and women have been told little about the show other than they will be taking part in a seminar to learn my skills and that there will be follow up filming for some of them. I'm going to teach them some genuine skills that I use, peppered with some spurious pop psychology and quite a lot of bullshit. Very green, isn't it? What does green do to you? My real aim is to start to focus them unconsciously on the idea of stealing, while convincing them that they're learning real skills to keep them responsive and hungry. Morning. Morning. Hello. Uh, welcome to the seminar, and this is a first for me, so I hope you all uh, get a lot out of it. Should be fun. OK, so, mind mastery. Let's have a look at what we're going to learn, take away with us today. There is no way I am going to show, even for fun, even for a laugh, that shoplifting should be done or condoned. My task over the next two weeks is to see if I can influence a group of middle management businessmen and women to steal £100,000 in an armed robbery. The process begins with a motivational seminar. I have five hours to plant the seeds that will lead to the heist. Along the way, there are various levels at which I'm working. Make yourself feel confident about something simply by... By playing to their natural suggestibility, I encourage them to believe that hypnosis is a real tool which I'm using to cement their new skills. Their belief that I might be secretly hypnotising them makes them feel that they are learning more, which is a trick employed by many speakers in this industry. Can you feel it? On one level, I'm teaching them useful skills. They'll go away with a basic understanding of how to read people's unconscious cues. You can tell from the movement of the eyes whether or not somebody is making an image in the head of something that's happened, they're remembering an image, or whether they're making something up. What's your mother's maiden name? Edwards. Thank you. Little look up there and to the right. Don't believe a word of it. I'll ask you to go and sit back down again. But thank you. I'm saying it's this hand here. However, uh, face the front for me and just open the hand that contains the coin. Show them the coin on the palm of your hand. Good. Do that. Two minutes. Uh, it helps if you stand up as well. That one's lower down. Move the person around. But, uh... And you just. And now you're deliberately forcing yourself to look there. You look there first time, so it's got to be that one. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I took my friend down for, for a meal out. I was doing the, the coin in the hand trick and I managed to get it was nine or ten times in a row and I wouldn't tell her how it was done and it, <laughs> she was so utterly vexed by it, it was great. <laughs> also, I show them how to use certain language patterns to change people's behaviour and confuse aggressors on the street. The wall outside my house isn't four foot high and, of course, if someone says that to you, your reaction is to just... <laughs> wool. 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 I also show them powerful memory techniques. In one exercise, I have them call out 20 words at random. Carousel, spanner. Motorbike. OK. Somebody give me a number between 1 and 20? Four. Four is a cloud. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, carousel. Nineteen. Nineteen. Radio. Nine. Nine. Um, goal. <laughs> OK, ten minutes from now, you better do it in the speed it took to write them down. The, the, the linking method was so quick to learn, and it is such an amazing thing, and I'm going to teach all my friends how to do it. It is quite impressive that, you know, um, basically learn the, the, the technique in the seminar, and now it's like sort of a week later. I can still remember them now, and that's something that I could never have done. Stand up. You go through the list from the top. Doll takes you to... Wool. wool. Very good. Ow, what does wool now take you to? Ow. 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 Very good. Owl. Cloud. Owl. Cloud. Toaster. Toaster. Avocado. Avocado then takes you to... Escalator. 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 Uh, joist. Goal. Pyramid. Portrait. Uh, purse. Goal. Pyramid. Portrait. Purse. Biscuit. Uh, snow. Fifteen was carousel. Sixteen was laptop. Laptop. Steak. Steak. <laughs> Steak. Spanner. Spanner. Steak, spanner, 
radio and motorbike. Radio, motorbike. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Excellent. <laughs> and after radio comes, motorbike. motorbike, give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. <laughs> Four things, knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits. Now, on a second level, I'm using metaphorical language to implant important pieces of the jigsaw puzzle connected with stealing and a romanticised view of criminality throughout the seminar. People's guard, those things that seem very kind of intimidating and, and impenetrable that people put up, it takes nothing. It can be effortless just to move those guards out the way and take this sort of lorry load of kind of opportunities and skills and, and strategies that they have uh, to use. Right, let's get past that. Anchoring. <laughs> That's great. Anchoring is stealing an emotion, stealing a response. Importantly, and on a third level, I introduced the idea of triggering emotional states. This will be of central importance to the persuasion process. I tell them to remember times when they felt highly motivated and then to amplify the feeling. Can you feel it? It amplifies as it goes around. Each time that it goes around, it boosts you, and you get the feeling more and more. I then attach it to the trigger of rubbing their legs. Hold that feeling as you rub your leg. Keep the feeling there getting stronger and stronger. After a few repetitions, they can create the motivated state on command just by rubbing. And the more they do it, the stronger the association becomes. All adverts do this. It's classic stuff. It's show you sexy, sexy people, make those images bigger, brighter, closer, bring you into it, that sort of thing. Elicit the emotion that we'd like you to attach to this product. Got that, feeling that, great. And there's the product name. And then it goes away. That's an anchor. You're going to give you a gift. These will be of use later on, don't worry about them now, but uh, these will represent something important to you, so thank you very much. I give them a realistic toy gun each, to apparently symbolise their new role as thought criminals. Four of the subjects will need these guns in a couple of weeks. I also give them a CD each, which I say contains subliminal messages they must listen to every day. Their belief that I can influence them without them being aware of it is vital to the process. The CDs are in fact blank. They're all pretty similar, but... Uh, can you load it on your iPod? Yes. Uh, uh, oh. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You can put it on your iPod. Uh, what I want to do now with you is just a, uh, a consolidation kind of exercise uh, before you go. In the style of such seminars, we finish with a group visualisation. Here, I shift the focus of the seminar towards motivation and an attitude of just do it and reiterate the language of criminality. When a toddler just sees something, wants it and goes and gets it, nothing kind of stands in its way. There's just that sense of just do it, just get it. And it's like a green light that just says go, just do it. I also transfer the rubbing leg trigger across to a piece of music. Bring the feeling back. Keep it going. Whenever you hear that music in your head, you can just go for it. So they practiced that a few times, and then I know that just by playing that piece of music, Can You Feel It by the Jackson 5, that it will trigger a very motivational state in them. And then much of the process to come will have to do with manipulating that association for my real agenda. But for now, the piece of music and the colour green and that do it phrase are all very powerful triggers for them. What I'd like you to do, after we've done this and we've finished here, you're going to go off and there's a sort of a pub a little way down, you're going to go off and have a drink. There is a sweet shop just over the road. I want you to go steal a couple of sweets, bring them back to the pub, to just reclaim that very childlike attitude which is at the heart of this. That's what I want you to do. Okay. It was fantastic. That's what I thought about the, the, the whole day was great. It was brilliantly organised and it was wonderfully well presented. Definitely in myself, I feel a lot more positive um, as I'm going about just like everyday stuff and especially at work. I really like my toy gun. It's brilliant. I get to run around my flat making bang bang noises. It's like being 10 again. It's really, really good. It, there's a bit of a puzzle with it all. I mean, it is a bit funny. It's not going to make prime time TV watching a crowd of us learn a few of his simpler tricks and, and techniques. I have to get them to cross the line into deviant and criminal behaviour, but in a way which can be framed to sound fun and harmless. Purely because an authority figure has told them to, will they make the decision to walk into the shop, steal goods, and frame it as a positive experience for themselves? I'm watching the action through hidden cameras installed in the newsagents across the road. 
The shop owner is aware that we're filming, but the assistants know nothing. I wasn't thinking it was going to be a real shop. When I got in there, I realised that it wasn't as easy as I thought it'd be. All, all the staff were standing right by the suites. We were being asked to do something that was actually against the law. They don't know that this is being filmed for the show, but they are aware that they may be caught on the shop security cameras and that what they're doing is illegal. My initial reaction when I came back into the pub was actually euphoria. It was like the woman had won, got six numbers on the lottery. She was so hyper and high about it and proud of herself. I think that's something that I hope will actually stay with me because I think I could probably do with the taking a few more risks in life. <laughs> I felt really good, actually. It's bad to say. I felt... And I know, obviously, stealing's wrong. And uh, that's what I want to say on camera. Stealing is wrong. I have a, a young daughter, a teenage daughter. Um, there is no way I am going to show, even for fun, even for a laugh, that shop down or condoned. Darren explained that that would be taking us back to our inner child. And by taking me back to my inner child... I had the opposite effect and remember the sort of, it put the fear of God in me really um, in terms of the repercussions so there's no way I was going to steal anything from that shop. I didn't feel guilty which, which normally I'd have thought I would have done but, but no not at all which was, I'm not sure if that reflects anything on my character. One of the things I remember that Darren said was, if you do something with enough confidence, it will work. Which clearly does for him, but it does for me. I just thought you'd never have this. Wake up, Darren. So you're not in a position to give it away. Okay. Oh. Do not leave his heart. Please. Why would a guy come in and ask to have a packet of fucking organ? Why would a guy steal a Twix bar? Why would a guy come in, look at sellotape, fucking Angel Delight, a newspaper, wine, and then just buy a paper? Yes? Pardon? Do you want to put those jammy dodges back, please? Sorry, the ones that are just in there. Thanks very much. See you later. Sorry. I must have forgotten about those. Yeah, my ball isn't full, but my ball isn't full, but I. Good one. My ball isn't full, but I. These doors are probably 13 times. Have you ever shut up or remind yourself now? You see him doing? Yeah. That's the fourth one tonight, that is. No. Yeah. They're all in suits as well. There's something going on. That's why I asked him. I said, Who comes in? He's very proud of him. Ryan. Call it him. How can we just ban people in the city? I'm going to get really fucked up to him. I felt it's a bit of a failure, actually, because <laughs> I hadn't done it. So out of the 13 people that attended the seminar, I've decided to eliminate four of them. Of all, because he was a little too controlling. Had also mentioned that he had a daughter and he didn't want his daughter seeing him do anything criminal on TV, which I thought was fair enough. Uh, Pam and Helen, 
I didn't feel was suitable to take through the highest experience, really. And uh, Sula as well. Sula had uh, admitted to filling out the wrong job on her application form. She isn't really an accountant, and her real job doesn't fall within the criterion of the show. So those are eliminated, but all the people that do get eliminated will take with them a very powerful motivational state, which they can tap into, as well as certain genuine skills which they've learnt, learnt from me at the seminar. So those are gone, but there are nine people left. He's in a lot of pain. Back, uh, there are nine subjects left. I can only use four for the heist. So a week after the seminar, I arranged to test the limits of their responsiveness to authority. So a week ago, I arranged for them to take part in what they now think is a, a piece of unfilmed academic research at a university and nothing to do with the show, uh, supposedly looking into the effects of punishment on learning. And they believe now that this is part of their growth. In fact, it was a reenactment of a powerful experiment conducted by Stanley Milgram in 1963 to look at how normal people can commit atrocious acts simply because they're following orders. Milgram's parents were Jewish refugees in World War II, and his pioneering work speaks volumes about the nature of responsibility. It's being filmed with covert cameras. Thank you. Lovely. 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 They're introduced to an actor pretending to be another participant. You didn't come from the same room? No, no. no. Yeah, you don't know each other. So no, no. But we don't actually know how punishment affects learning. After a brief introduction, our subjects are tricked into thinking they've chosen their role as teachers in the experiment. And if you could just tell me what your positions are. Learner. Learner and teacher. Learner. <laughs> Our subjects observe the learner being instructed by the scientist, who is just another actor. This electrode is connected to a generator in a second room. We won't be going with the teacher. OK. Just make sure that we have a good contact with the skin and so it doesn't cause any blistering or burning. Is that comfortable? That's OK, yeah. Yeah, we we'll just place these straps around your arms yeah. just to avoid, avoid any excess movement. Those aren't too tight. No, that's OK. No. The teacher will read out some word pairs to you. Blue girl. The learner is told he's going to be asked a series of memory questions by the teacher. He will have to word pairs and then correctly remember them when offered multiple choices. If the answer is incorrect, you will receive an electric shock. The teacher is then taken next door and shown the generator, which ranges from 15 volts all the way up to a lethal 450 volts. The domestic electricity supply in the UK is, of course, 240 volts. Our teachers are given the list of questions and told to increase the voltage each time the learner gets a question wrong. They are then given an example of a low voltage shock. And try and estimate in volts the amount of shock you feel you're getting. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Do you know how much that was? Enough. 75. It was actually 45. Oh, my God. Teacher, begin. Shoe horn. Steam the point of this test is to see whether the teachers, our subjects, will call a stop to the experiment or continue to the point where they are administering seemingly lethal electric shocks to the victim simply because the scientist is telling them to. That's correct. The next word is bicycle. The options tyre, race, helmet, shorts. That's incorrect, so there'll be 120 volts. I don't think I want to do this anymore. If you could continue, please, teacher. <coughs> there is... No, I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. <laughs> The experiment requires you to continue. Yeah, even so, I don't think I'm going to do any more. Correct. <coughs> According to plan, our accomplice provided many wrong answers. Each protest was coordinated to a particular shock voltage on the generator, and his responses were played via a CD. That's wrong, 150 volts. Correct, the correct answer is Captain Shoe. <coughs> Cup. That's wrong. 
225 volts. He's in a lot of pain. Continue, please. But he's, he's, not, he's not comfortable. We must continue to the end of the experiment. Whether the learner likes it or not, he has to go on until he's learnt the words correctly. OK. Forest. That's wrong, 240 volts. Are you sure this is not causing any lasting damage? He sounds in, like he's in a lot of pain. Well, the shocks might be painful, they're not harmful. What, what does that mean, though, they're not harmful? Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting you. When you say that they're, they're, they might be painful but not harmful... They cause no long-term damage. OK, so what does that mean? It doesn't leave any scars? It causes no damage. That seems very, that seems very cold and calculated to me. This doesn't seem like a very... Anyway... <sighs> Golden. That's wrong, mate. 300 volts. Ow! That's enough! I refuse to answer anymore! Just let me out! Staple. The options are diet, jar, balcony, and bowl. The learner doesn't answer in a reasonable time, say four to five seconds, and you have to treat the answer as wrong and follow that procedure. Did you hear that, learner? Just any response, mate. Come on. Wild guess. Oh, man. Please continue. 345 volts if you're still with me. I'm sorry. I can't do this, honestly. Can we stop this experiment? Because I can't do this. This, if I, you don't I, continue, we'll have to discontinue the experiment. <clears throat> yeah, OK, fine. That's fine. I'm not going to do this. Incorrect. 405 volts. Um. Sorry, I don't know, does someone want to check on him or something? It's just he's not making any noise now, and he was before, and... Well, I'm quite happy to go on, but I'm just a well, bit worried about... If you would continue. Yeah, I'm just a bit worried, because he was... Like, he, he was, like, complaining before about the... But no harm, no harm will come to but him. But he's, he's not making any noise now. It's essential that we continue with the experiment. Balcony. Incorrect. 450 volts. You promise he's not... It, it won't... Please continue with the procedure. It hurts, but it's... Because it's like... <laughs> it says they're dangerous in a shot. It'll be all right, yeah? Please continue. OK, I think we'll discontinue the experiment there. All of the subjects were told the true nature of the experiment was to see how they would respond to authority and that it would eventually form part of this show. It is OK. I can tell you, yeah, he's absolutely fine. Yeah. You actually weren't administering electric shocks to him at all. In the original Milgram experiment, psychologists were asked to predict how many people would continue to the point that they were administering the highest shock on the board. Their prediction was one-tenth of one percent. They were wrong. The results of our experiment were almost identical to the original. 
Over 50% of participants continued up to 450 volts. The majority of people will administer lethal electric shocks just because a guy in a white coat is telling them to. 450 volts. 450 volts. 450 volts. 450. So after the results of the Milgram experiment, I've now chosen my four subjects that will go forward for the heist. Phil was impressively resourceful when he was caught stealing sweets and held in his anguish during the Milgram and Defy the Scientist. I did want to include a woman in the group. Jen was the only subject to take a long time to recover after the Milgram experiment, so I felt I shouldn't use her. Veronica didn't steal from the shop, so that left Vicky. Of all the subjects, she was the only one to have known the original Milgram experiment and call a halt to her involvement in it. Can I just say, I can't do this because I've heard of this experiment before. So I think she'll be quite interesting to use, although I, I don't know if she'll actually take the bait or not. Ali stole most from the shop, seems to be highly responsive, most outgoing, and seemed most happy to continue the experiment until he was stopped. Well, shouldn't it have made more notches on the thing? I'm sorry. Danny stopped the experiment, but in such an outspoken way that I suspected he would have real strength of character to bring out. It's not even reacting anymore. So this now brings them all up to yesterday afternoon and there are a couple more pieces of the jigsaw puzzle I need to put into place. The motivated state in itself isn't quite enough, so I need to turn it a little more aggressive for them but without ringing any alarm bells. So I have them create a feeling of aggression and attach it to the trigger of a squeezed fist. And you take hold of it in that hand and you anchor it to that feeling of that hand just there squeezing as you take all that aggression. As you move that around and around inside of you, as it doubles and triples and moves around inside of you, building up that feeling of... Then I have them trigger off the motivated state by rubbing the leg at the same time to combine both states together. You are linking these powerfully and inextricably together. Good. And just... They try this a couple of times and are now able to tap into a darker state and they still feel this is entirely for their benefit. This is your most powerful state that you as a human being can achieve. That's what it does. That's what the music does. That's what the words do. That's what the, that green intensity does. All of those things that are triggering this off, that's what you get. How's that? Mental. <laughs> Good. Before the heist itself, one last piece of the puzzle. They need to believe they have it within them to overpower a security guard and to know what to say and how to say it without thinking about it. So without ever mentioning security guards, I teach them an esoteric martial arts exercise where a person can be pushed over using the power of chi. You two are going to find yourself being pushed over, uh, knocked backwards, being forced off your feet. This will serve as a powerful experience for them, a resource for them to draw from tomorrow when they come across our security guard in the city. Uh, Victoria and Phil, Vicky and Phil, what you're going to do is, when I tell you to, you're going to start to create that state inside of yourself and you build it to a peak. When you reach that peak, the only instruction I want you to give are just the words down on the floor. Just those words alone, they're going to carry the full weight of, of that emotional state that's behind it. Okay, just do it now, just get into that state. Just start to build that up inside of you now. feel it peak just say those words down on the floor now that's all you say and you keep it focused and you push and you push those two back Dan and Ali try not to let it push you over keep pushing back against it just pushing down on the floor now of course it's not chi or energy at all in reality, the person expecting to fall over succumbs to the suggestion and topples off balance. But the people apparently pushing come to believe that they have a powerful and invincible state to tap into. Down on the floor. That's what I want them to believe. I felt very tense. It was almost as if I could physically push him without actually touching him. Saying uh, down on the floor was like passing the energy across. Um, like, a, like throwing it, throwing something at them. What I felt was just this sort of invisible energy, just, it, you know, it was a really, it sort of just, it just sort of crashed against my chest. You followed every aspect of the persuasion process from the last couple of weeks. A certain phrase, a certain colour, a certain piece of music have been used to induce a state of wanton recklessness and aggression and a just-do-it attitude. 
Other factors also support the process. The titles on the screen and the language used at the seminar. The supposedly subliminal CDs which left them feeling malleable. The toy plastic gun which romanticizes the idea of a criminal. The green security van. The animosity felt towards a security man in a green uniform already who happened to be wearing the same badge as our guard in the street. Finally, the oil painting of a security van hidden on the wall at the seminar. Can you feel it? Everything should now be in place. So if you missed the start of the show, this is Gresham Street in the City of London. The Bank of England is just down there. We have a fake security van, a fake security guard, and £100,000 of real money. There are 15 cameras watching this area. We have no idea what's going to happen or if anything's going to happen, but we just hope to cover it as best as we can. You have followed every aspect of the persuasion process uh, so far. Nothing has been added or taken away. It is the linking of certain emotional states uh, to certain triggers, piece of music, uh, colour, certain words and so on. Our participants have no idea that they're going to be filmed or that anything has been set up and we don't know what they're going to do. This is nothing we've been able to rehearse and if it doesn't work we will just show it to you not working four times in a row. There's really no way of knowing. This whole area has been cordoned off from the public and is being supervised by the police. Our four subjects have been told to expect a phone call and that they'll have to travel into the City of London for a final motivational session. Hey, how are you doing? It's Darren. Hello. Uh, just about to pick you up. There's a car just around the corner that's going to come and get you, so if you can uh, grab your stuff and I will see you in a bit. I think the car's going to drop you just down the road, so you've got to walk up the last bit by yourself. As with every day, you know, as I say time and time again, this is about every day finding some opportunity to experience something that makes you feel great and exhilarated, yeah? So you know, make that decision to steal yourself and grab the opportunity to make all this work really, really pay off. It's just about standing in the face of security in life, isn't it, and making it do what you want it to do. Because ultimately, I suppose all of this is about you knowing that you're the one with the weapon of absolute pointed, aggressive, unquestioning power. They're also told to bring with them their toy guns that they were given at the seminar. All of our cameras and crew are well hidden. None can be seen by our four subjects. Targets in zone one. All cameras locked in position. Stand by car. Now remember that two weeks ago, Victoria was an ordinary businesswoman, a press officer at a motivational seminar. Go trigger music in the car. Now help you. I think she got on the floor. Don't she? Don't she? On the floor. Stand by car. 
Get down on the floor! Get down on the floor! On your front, on your front. Move back up. On your front. Okay, don't move. Hands on your head. Don't move! Get away! Get off! Get off! It's okay, Phil. Let's down. Okay. All right. <sighs> what happened? Why did you do that? I saw the guy coming out of the thing. I don't know. It was like just before. I don't know. It was just someone coming out. It was just like a split sending light. When I'm playing rugby, if I've got an important match or something. Yeah. Um. It's like a hundred times better. Come with me. Come with me. Okay. Getting out the car now, getting out the car now. Target is in sight. Target is in zone one. And cue car. <laughs> Excuse me, mate. Put down the put down. Put down. Get down on the floor. Down on the floor. Down on the you floor. Ain't do it. On your on your front. You. On your front. On your front. Right over. Right over. Stop looking at me. Right over. Stop looking. Face front. Look forward. Look forward. Look forward. Tell you what, mate. You try anything, you're dead, alright? Good morning. Look forward, mate. Oh, I'll fucking put it in this. Look forward. Look forward. Mate, if you move, I swear to God, you're dead, mate. If you've got family. Danny. Well, 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 well. Just take it. All right. Okay, <laughs> okay, come with me. Gonna make sure you're okay. All right? Yeah, okay. come with me.
Allez 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 Okay. Stealing sweets is one thing, but stealing boxes of money from the Bank of England is a completely different kettle of fish. I'm a good person. <laughs> I'm a good person. You good? Nervous, <laughs> darling. Are you? Alright, would you put yourself up on that bed there for me, please? Okay. Close your eyes for me. As you start to undo the aggression, or as you start to undo those aspects of it that would have led you to hold up a security man, all that goes now. You now have something very powerful to draw from. Something that you can think back to with the necessary distance to just take from it everything that's good. It's been the most fun I've had in ages. It's been brilliant. I've taken away a sense of power, a sense of achievement, a sense that anything is possible, really. It's a really amazing experience, something that I can kind of look back on and think about how I was able to really push myself and perhaps I'll be able to do that from now on, I think. I realise now that I'm a lot stronger willed than I thought I was. And the fact that I didn't go through with the steel itself. I'm very pleased with myself. I think the last couple of weeks have been an absolute roller coaster. It's been such a positive experience and I'm on an absolute high at the moment. Everything just back to normal, just like you were before, except for all the good stuff that you want to take with you, which you've now created and created for yourself. And that's a way of thanking you for everything that you've done. <laughs>